Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten here, bringing you my review of the 16th mystery in the Nancy Drew series, The White Wolf of Icicle Creek. As usual, my reviews are based on five separate categories. We have plot, characters, setting and design, entertainment and gameplay value, and music and vibe. Each of those categories is scored on a scale of 1 to 10 for a final score out of 50, and then I assign each game a letter grade based on the score at the end. So let's get started with the plot of The White Wolf of Icicle Creek. So for this mystery, Nancy was recommended to the owner of a lodge in Alberta, Canada um, by the Raleigh's, who Nancy solved a mystery for in her in uh, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. So Nancy was recommended for this case. Basically, the lodge has been having a lot of mysterious accidents. You know, there was some food poisoning that was kind of unexplained. Someone broke their leg on the stairs that mysteriously became iced. Uh, there have been things missing. There was a rock thrown th through somebody's window. Somebody's tires were slashed. Just all sorts of mysterious accidents. And one of the most intriguing parts of this mystery is that every time there's a mysterious accident, there's this white wolf that you can hear howling. Sometimes people see the wolf. So people think that the lodge is cursed by this wolf, and that's the reason all of these accidents have been happening. And Chantal is really worried about getting sued. She doesn't want... Um, people to stop coming to the lodge because this is her business so she asks Nancy to come to the lodge and solve the mystery for her. Nancy ends up working undercover as the maid at the lodge and as the cook um, and it's actually Nancy's idea because Nancy wants to be able to move around the lodge without being suspicious in any way. So as far as the basis for the plot I really enjoy kind of the the direction that it takes from the very start. I think it's a very interesting plot it's kind of like a classic mystery you've got these mysterious accidents there's something there's rumors of a curse there's lots of interesting characters so I think the plot definitely starts out really strong and I think it stays pretty strong throughout the mystery as well I really do enjoy the plot of this mystery because there are uh, little subtle things and little subtle subplots that make the plot even more interesting we learn some more about the background of some of the characters and why they may or may not be suspects which is always interesting uh, we learn a little bit more about the wolf itself and I think that subplot is extremely intriguing so I think all of the subplots that are included in the plot um, really make it very interesting um, and make it overall just really intriguing to watch it unfold. There's lots of information for us to find out, which I love. The more information for us as detectives to uncover, the better. I can't give the plot a perfect score because the end reveal for the culprit, there's quite a quite a few pieces of information that were kind of left out. So when we find out why the culprit was the culprit and why the accidents were happening, um, we did it's not something that we could have really seen coming there was a little bit of information missing and I like to be able to put the clues together and kind of see the culprit and it makes sense when it's revealed whereas I don't want it to have to be explained to me I want to be able to explain it without any extra information but that's really the only issue I have with the plot otherwise it's very exciting and a lot of fun so overall I give the plot for White Wolf of Icicle Creek an 8 out of 10 now let's move on to characters. This is a big cast of characters. There is a lot of them. First we have Ollie Randall, who is the kind of the handyman at the lodge. He really wants to hunt the wolf. He wants to get rid of it. He's convinced it's a curse and he wants to just kill it and be done with the problem. There is Yanni Volkstaya, who is a champion cross-country skier who is at the lodge and who has been skiing around. There's rumors that there's a really big ski competition that's going to be held in the area so he might be there kind of trying to get a lay of the land for that then there's Guadalupe Guadalupe Comillo who um, says that she is a bird washer she's at the lodge to look for birds we have Bill Kessler um, who is kind of like a more middle-aged man um, he's from Canada you can tell by his accent um, but he says that he's just staying at the lodge just because 
There's Lou Talbot, who is a college student. He is an art major. I think he's getting his master's in art. Um, and he's just kind of like your quirky art student, um, very creative, has a lot of original ideas. And he um, just thought that the lodge would be a nice place to visit. So those are all the people. Well, there's also Freddie, who is Ollie's daughter, who is um, the second child character that we ever see in the games. You don't really interact with her too much beyond getting hit by snowballs and throwing snowballs at her. That's basically the extent of the interaction. But she is a physical character. You can't actually see her. And then there are a ton of phone friends. There are a lot of them. And that's kind of one of the issues I have with the characters is that the quality of interaction that we have with the characters on the phone is significantly more in depth than the interaction that we have with the characters at the lodge. I would prefer it the w other way around where the phone characters are kind of supplementary um, but they almost take up just as much time if not more time than conversing with the actual physical characters. Um, so that's a little bit of an issue I have but overall I really do enjoy the characters. It's a unique cast of characters. They're all um, a little bit like likable and a little bit unlikable. They're so they have these little quirks that can be kind of frustrating and annoying. And as we start to learn more and more about them, you really kind of can see how any one of them could be a suspect, how any one of them has these just suspicious characteristics about them, which makes it kind of tricky to figure out who the culprit is, which I really appreciate. So I do enjoy that it's a large cast of characters and we do go in depth on most of their storylines. I just wish that the phone characters weren't as much of a focus. But Overall, I give characters a solid 8 out of 10. So now let's move on to setting and design, which considers where the game takes place and how well that setting is incorporated into the mystery itself and how well the overall environment is designed. I love the setting and design of this game. This game takes place in Alberta, Canada in the middle of winter. So there is snow everywhere and I love it. It's great. They do a really nice job. Um, doing the design for all of the snow when nancy is walking around you hear her footsteps in the snow it's wonderful it's definitely i feel like the most well-developed outdoor environment that we've seen in a game so far and nancy does actually get to walk around and see quite a bit of it there are several locations outside that she gets to go visit and i really enjoy that it's not like she's just, she's not exploring a town, which she does in some other mysteries where she goes to lots of different places. It's all one location, but it, it's just such a big location and it has so much character to it. So I really, really love that. The lodge is beautiful as well. The design in there, there's so many just cozy spaces. There's the couches in the lodge with right next to the fireplace that's always going. There's the cool little kitchen. There's You get to see everyone's bedrooms, all of the lodging rooms. It's just really, really pretty. I think um, the design, like the graphics of the game, are also pretty impressive. Uh, for the most part, you can really um, envision the characters in real life. They are a little bit fuzzy, which is why I can't really give the setting and design a perfect score for this game. I think there were a few places that I definitely wanted to explore even more that were just kind of a cursory glance but I do still like the breadth of the game even though there wasn't a whole lot of depth in some places there was definitely enough depth in the lodge itself and in most of the places outside so I give setting and design a score of 9 out of 10 Next, let's move on to entertainment and gameplay value, which considers how fun the game is to play and how fun and easy it is to replay. This is definitely a fun game. I really have a good time when I play this one. There are some interesting parts of the game that I could certainly see would take away the fun for a lot of players, namely that Nancy is required to do chores every day and quite a bit of them she has to do the laundry and she has to cook breakfast lunch and dinner for a majority of the game i personally really enjoy the cooking tasks i think they're really fun and i think they're really detailed enough that they don't feel um, ridiculously tedious they're different every time so i really personally enjoy them however you do have to do them a lot it's definitely busy work and it definitely does take up a huge part of the game so i could definitely see why that would be frustrating for a lot of detectives this is also a very puzzle heavy game and some of the puzzles I'm looking at you fox and geese are extremely difficult and extremely frustrating however there is a certain sense of accomplishment when you complete these extremely difficult puzzles but 
because they are so challenging and because there are so many of them, it could definitely detract from the game if you're looking more for that mystery type vibe. One other thing that I'll mention too is that there is a lot of third person in this game. Third person is something that I just take issue with in general because it takes you out of the immersion of the game. And when I'm talking about third person, I mean the di we are looking at Nancy from a bird's eye view. So like the puzzle where she's jumping on ice flows and trying to get from one side of the broken up lake to the other. That's third person. It's not very immersive. It's cartoonish in graphics. And that definitely detracts from the gameplay from me at least a little bit. However, I do really enjoy this game and I do think it is a fun game. It's definitely fun to replay because there is it's a longer game, which I also like. So there's a lot going on in the game that you can definitely go back to and really enjoy. It's a good one, especially if you're in the mood for puzzles. So while it's not perfect in this category, I do give The White Wolf of Icicle Creek a 7 out of 10 in the category of entertainment and gameplay value. And finally, we move on to our last category, music and vibe. So for the music in this game, I do really enjoy it. However, the music is very subtle. It's, um, really quiet and you can make the music louder certainly but when the game defaults the music to be really quiet it's definitely not a part of the game as much. I don't feel that it adds as much to the game as the music does in other games. I love the music, but I don't think it adds as much in this particular instance. Uh, the vibe of the game, however, is quite nice. Um, it's when you're outside in the cold, they do a lot of things to definitely make it feel like Nancy is cold, this is dangerous, she does a lot of shivering, I love her footprints in the snow. Uh, when we find um, there's a secret passageway in this game, when we find the secret passageway, there's lots of like eerie noises and creepy lighting. So there is a little bit of subtle scare factor, but nothing major. I do think they do a really just nice job with the sound effects overall. But again, it's just a little bit disappointing that the music, it probably had more opportunity to add to the game than it did, even though I really like the music. So overall, I give White Wolf of Icicle Creek an 8 out of 10 for music and vibe. So if we add up our scores, we have an 8 for plot, 8 for characters, 9 for setting and design, 7 for entertainment and gameplay value, 8 for music and vibe for a total score of 40 out of 50, which gives us a final grade of a B-. minus. Now, you might be thinking a B- minus isn't a great game, great, <laughs> I can talk, great grade, but remember that I grade all of these games next to each other. So it's not all, against all video games in the world, it's against each other. I personally um, place White Wolf of Icicle Creek in kind of the middle range of games for myself. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely not my least favorite, and I definitely enjoy playing it. I would absolutely recommend this game to detectives, especially if you enjoy puzzles I think and exploration. I think it's really good for those two things, which are two things that I enjoy looking for in a game. It's definitely a positive game. There are some areas where they certainly could have done better, but I think overall it's very successful in what it goes for, and it's very unique in the series because Nancy really doesn't go to snowy places all that often. This is easily the snowiest place she's gone and she spends a lot of time outside so it's really fun just for that different environment thank you so much for watching this review fellow detectives i hope you enjoyed it please let me know what you think of this game in the comments down below i would be very curious to hear your thoughts as well thank you so much for watching fellow detectives i will hope to see you soon in some of my other walkthroughs and reviews